All right, so 15.6 talks about the relationship between the moment of a force and angular momentum. Um, let's look at what our force definition was first, though. So right here on this diagram, we have an object going along a path, and it's subject to some forces. It could be a million, but the resultant force looks like this. And we're going to measure that from some reference point O because that's what we're going to want to know the moment or the and the angular momentum about. Okay, so if you remember the summation of the forces, Newton's second law is equal to mass times acceleration. Or we could call that mv dot. All right, don't confuse that with mv. All right. This is our linear momentum. We're going to talk about that, but right now we're talking about forces. <coughs> um, and this should be familiar from statics, but we could find that if we had those forces acting at a distance r from the object, that we get a moment or a torque about that point O. And we get that by taking the cross product of r with the summation of those forces or the resultant force. And if I can rewrite this like this, then I can say that that is equal to R crossed M V dot. Let's keep those vector signs. All right, so the summation of the moment about O is equal to R crossed M V dot. All right, now hold on to that for a second. Um, we had this angular momentum thing we've been talking about. Well, Sorry, that's a linear momentum. Um, we find the angular momentum h by taking the cross product with the linear momentum. Let's take the time derivative. So I'm going to call, let's say that's about o still. Um, I'm going to call this new thing h dot. It's a time rate of change of angular momentum about O. And let's take the time derivative of R crossed into the linear momentum. This is going to give me R dot crossed mv plus r crossed mv dot. Okay, well, if you remember, you, whenever you cross something into itself, you get zero. So that's velocity, right? r dot equals velocity. That's velocity too. So this whole term right here goes to zero. And we're just left with h dot is equal to r crossed m v dot. Whoa, r crossed m v dot, r crossed m v dot. So from this, we can say that the summation of the moments about O is equal to the time rate of change of angular momentum about O. All right, that's pretty deep, but that's not much more analogous or m not much harder than the definition of force that we talked about, right? Force is the time rate of change of momentum. 
Well, this is the time rate of change of angular momentum. So all we've done is factored in a, a, a position vector on each side, more or less. So one more time, the summation of the moments about O will result in a time rate of change of angular momentum about O. If you can say that in words, it probably means you understand it.